Shalom. Before I begin this video, I want to give out praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rechakwadash, which are the true names of the Heavenly Father, in which his name is Yahweh, and likewise the name of his son in ancient Hebrew, which his name is Yahweh Shai, Baha Rechakwadash, which means in the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that are still to this very day continuing to rule very well. Uh, the apostles that have been laboring this work continually for years and years and still holding fast to this word. Also the elders that have came as well, following the stead of the apostles. And uh, also much due honors to the um, the brothers as well, the whole elect that is uh, laboring this work and continue to labor as well. Showing forth your diligence to make your calling and election sure. And faith and truth and sincerity and all charity. <clears throat> now, um, the topic of this video is uh, going to be entitled Abounding in the Work. And according to the topic of abounding in the work, that is what the prophets of the Lord are to do in this time. Okay? To abound in the work. And, and what is the work? All right? The work is first and foremost teaching this word by going out in the highways and byways as our Lord commanded us to do <clears throat> and continue and continue to do on a consistent basis and also as well not only that also to do lessons like these okay this is a part of the work by um, putting up lessons on the airways because our Lord Yahweh Shai spoke of this word being preached throughout all the world and then the end was going to commence and, and we're in the midst of that because this word is now being put forth throughout the four corners of the earth and now you're starting to see that the, the end may manifest okay and not only just putting up videos on on, on the internet on the airways but also doing that on a consistent basis okay why because like the title says we are to abound in the work or or we're we are abounding in the work this is how we abound in the work by doing this okay because this is not like it was back in the ancient world you know we can't get up and go from city to city and you know take a plane and go to uh, other places of the world and uh, teach this word continually you know that's that's uh, too much of a uh, you know that's too much for the men of the Lord in this time okay why because you had to go through the motions you got to go through Esau's system in order to do certain things like that so the Lord gave us <clears throat> as the scriptures deem as the unicorn which is written about in the Bible and to leave the labor on the unicorn okay which represents what the internet okay in which you know we made videos and uh, did lessons and shows concerning that concerning the unicorn you know and <clears throat> breaking it down and showing you that it's talking about the internet especially our uh, Psalms chapter 19 where it speaks about this word being uh, pushed forth on the internet, okay? And that's the reason why, the main reason why the higher ups of Edom, in which Edom is the true biblical nationality of the so-called white man, okay? That's the reason why the, the higher ups of Edom wants this, the internet to be locked down, okay? And I'm trying to remember who... Uh, made the statement concerning the internet it was one of the Rockefellers I believe it was Jay Rockefeller who uh, <clears throat> made the statement and quoted that the internet was the uh, worst thing ever created okay and he said that under the guise of um, it being a threat to national security in which in a way it it's a, it's a threat to their security alright it's a threat to the security of the Edomites 
because this word is is uh, coming against them. Okay, this word is is condemning them. And when it's being put forth on the internet, you know, now they're realizing that that was a mistake, that they even created the internet. Okay, but it's through the uh, spirit of the Lord that the internet was created. Why? Because, like Yahweh Shai said to his apostles, is that this gospel shall be preached through all the world, and then the end shall come. Okay, and this is the vehicle that the Lord is using to do that. <clears throat> okay, but not getting too far off the topic. <clears throat> Slock it. Not getting too far off the topic. You know, we are, are to abound in the work, man. All right? And that doesn't mean taking breaks from doing his work. Okay? That's not abounding in the work. All right? Abounding in the work is, again, is showing a, a, a level of diligence and urgency in doing his work. And also as well, not only that, by doing this, also this, this uh, leaks or benefits you in other areas. Okay? And how is that? Because Yahweh Bashem El Shai will not leave his servants to, uh, <clears throat> you know, leave his servants in, in, a, in a critical state. And when I say that, I'm talking about he's not going to leave his servants to uh, beg for, for bread or anything of that nature, man. You know, we're going to be taken care of, man. All right. <clears throat> it's lucky. Yeah, he's not going to leave us in, the, in, a, in a condition to where. You know, we have to eat off of out of trash cans and things of that nature. No, man, the Lord is, is going to continue to fight for us if we fight for him. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and jump stuff that I have here. And I'll uh, break it down further. Okay, this is the book of uh, 2 Corinthians, chapter 8. eight. This is at verse uh, 7. It says, Therefore, as ye abound in everything, right? Which is speaking about this work. Okay, in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. Right. And that that's the point. So as you abound in faith, all right, and we, like we always say, faith is an action, okay? Faith is an action that you show towards the most high by doing what? By doing the work. Okay. So in everything in faith, such, in, in such things as faith and utterance and knowledge and over utterance means uh, to speak. Okay, to utter these words. That's why um, the scriptures say that um, I believe, therefore I speak. Okay. So again, in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence. All right. It says in, in your love to us, in which love is doing the work. All right. Like the scriptures say, and um, I believe it's our second John, where it says that this is love, that we keep his commandment. All right. This is a form of showing love, man. When you reproving and rebuking and exhorting one another, that's a form of love, man. All right. Really, that's true love. Okay. You know, it's not that carnal feeling that you get whenever you have a deep feeling for somebody. No, man. If you really love somebody, you will pull them out of the fire. And that's what we're doing. We're trying to pull the chosen out of the nation of Israel out of the fire. Okay. Just how Yahweh Shai pulled his disciples and the ones that believe out of the world. Okay. And preserved them. Now it says, see that ye abound in this grace also. So like I mentioned earlier, now that you abound in these things, right? Faith, utterance, knowledge, and all diligence. And if you're in your, uh, your love, you're also going to abound in the grace. Okay? In other words, you have more. You're, you're more than likely to be delivered than the next man. Okay? Now when I say that, I'm talking about whenever you put forth you're 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 all into this this word. You put it all into this work and doing everything that you can to um, further the ministry. Then your faith 
also gets built up. Your wisdom gets built up. Everything that, that is uh, needed in the time of trouble gets built up. All right, you're building up your defenses. So you're at least likely to be overcome by the hour of temptation, which is to come upon all the world. Like it says in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. So that's what I mean by that when I say that you have more, you're more of a chance and you're more likely to obtain salvation by doing that. Like it says here, abound in the grace also. Okay? Because grace is what we need in this time, man. Okay, why? Because since we're in this captivity, we're in this, and we're also in the flesh, you know, this place has been set up to where you can fall at any point in time. Okay? At any at any given moment. You know, those temptations can come at you. All right? The traps that's laid for us, the snares, there everywhere you turn, it's a snare. Everywhere you go to, it's a snare. All right? You could just go into your local grocery store. You can go to any any other place here in America and everything snare man there's no there is no place clean here in the soils of america or babylon the great okay so that's why we need grace man because even now we're breaking the law okay because grace is set up for us to get ourselves together and get it right and to get our minds right to prepare ourselves okay that's why a grace period is given a grace period for us to uh, come back and to get ourselves together, man. Okay? Because now is the time to where the Lord is about to cash in. Okay? He's about to come back and, um, it's like it. Like I mentioned earlier, before I got that notification, I know your brothers probably saw it. Is that when you abound in this work, is that your faith is getting built up. Everything, all your defenses is being built up. You're, you're able to uh, withstand in the evil day. Okay? And like I mentioned, man, this place is... is wholly corrupted man that's why we need deliverance and that's why we need grace okay by us even obtaining this knowledge is grace in itself okay because now we've been given a chance to to uh be able to do the will of Yahweh by Shemion Shai and that's a blessing man So um, I had another precept I want to grab. This is uh, the book of Sirach, chapter 11. And this is at verse... Uh, let's see, slide here. For in Sirach chapter 11 is that uh, you know by doing these things you know when we're coming to the time to where our people are going to be tried and guess what the elect is also going to be a part of it alright because there's a uh, I believe you know you got people that that's, that believe in um, the pre-tribulation doctrine that you know before tribulation happens here you know they're going to be delivered up, uh, or taken up into the heavens no man everybody's got to go through that man okay so that's why the lord has put these things out there if you go read the book uh, the book of matthew chapter 24 
it gives you a vivid illustration on uh, what is going to happen to the nation of Israel, and specifically Israel, man. All right. And guess what? During the time and uh, when Yahushua was speaking those things during the Roman Empire, it actually happened. All right. But guess what? The Lord was still talking over their heads when he was saying these things, all right? Because the things that he was saying and that he was telling his disciples was going to happen as well in this time, okay? Just how you had the uh, the persecution of the Israelites that was in the Roman Empire, guess what? You're going to have that same persecution that's going to happen today. So that's why, again, like I mentioned earlier, since we have this word we have to abound in it man okay now i was looking for uh a priest up there but i can't find it right now i'm gonna see if i can get another one doesn't mean to strive it means to fight okay so like the title says again to abound in the work you're also fighting okay you're fighting against the, uh, the, the principalities and the powers that are set up here on this land And you're also fighting against yourself. Because again, we're in the flesh. All right? But when you're doing these things, like I read earlier, in the first precept that I brought out in Corinthians, when you do these things, you're also abounding in grace. In other words, that the, the flesh, you're, you're leaving no room for the flesh to overcome you. All right? Actually, it should be another precept, I believe, in the book of Matthew. All right, it's book of Matthew, chapter 6. And I'm going to start at verse... Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to start at verse 31. It says, uh, Therefore, take no thought, saying... What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. See that? Because when the scriptures go into the gen, gen, uh, the Gentiles, that's talking about the Israelite foreigners, okay? Because two thirds of our people <coughs> are considered the heathen. And they seek after these things. They seek after what they're going to eat, you know, what they're going to drink, what they're going to wear. You know, they, they worry about these things instead of worrying about the Most High that gives us these things. All right. And you can include, you know, Esau and the nations that are here as well. All right. You, uh, the modern day Babylonians, as we call them. <laughs> Because they, they worry about these things and, you know, they don't look to the most high, man. I'm talking about our people. 
verse 32 again says, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly Father, knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Okay? So we are to seek the kingdom of the Most High, man. All right? And by doing his work is seeking the kingdom of the Most High. Okay? The more time you put into this, the more benefits that you will get out of it. Okay? The reason why we say this is because we're living testimonies. Okay? Each brother has their own, you know, they, they have their own uh, walk in this truth. And each brother will, will tell you. And they'll say the same thing. You you have to put you have to put your whole stock into this truth, man. All right. And then you'll start to see the Lord work, man. Okay. But it takes time. And certain guys have lost patience because they put all their time and effort into this work, and they're not seeing any, any anything out of it, man. And that's how guys. Guys lose it, man. And that's how they end up falling away. Uh, verse 34, it says, uh, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. All right? So that's the point. Take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow will, will, will handle itself, man. I believe I remember the precept I wanted to grab. Um, I'll call hello, y'all. I'll buy you shot. That's what I'm looking for. Sirach chapter 10. I don't know why I was getting birth, uh, ch chapter 11. Uh, Sirach chapter 10. And um, let's see. Uh, I think we'll get to the point. Yeah, verse 27. Uh, Sirach chapter 10, verse 27. It says, Better is he that laboreth. <laughs> Read again. It says, Better is he that laboreth. It's better, it's better is he that, that that's doing his work, man. Okay? So that's why certain, certain guys that, that were taking breaks, man, it took one or two, three, four, five years off. And now decide to come back when things are hot. You know, the Lord's not dealing with you, man. The, the Lord's not dealing with guys like that. All right? I'm talking about to the ones that, that are, um, that have done that, man. And the apostles know who they are. Okay? It's better is he that laboreth and aboundeth in all things than, uh, than he that boasts himself and one of the bread. Another one. Yeah, that's what I wanted to sprocket that. Okay. Yeah, that was a good precept I just that, that just came out, but this is the one I was looking for. Again, call all y'all about Shamel Shy. Alright, this is uh the book of Sirach, chapter eleven. And uh, this is at verse uh, 21. Marvel not at the works of sinners, but trust in the Lord and abide in thy labor. Okay? So don't marvel at the works of sinners, man, because they have their reward. Okay? Okay? But it says here to trust in the Lord and abide in thy labor. All right. Abiding in thy labor. You're supposed to live this thing, man. You're supposed to be living it out. Okay. We're not, when you, when you, 
set foot in this truth, you're no longer a part of the world. All right, the, the world of Esau. Okay, now you're stepping into this world. Okay, and there are certain things that are required out of us in this world that we're that we're in right now. Okay, you know it's, it's, it's more than just calling yourself a Hebrew Israelite and um, putting on flashy garments. Okay, and, and putting fringes on all your T-shirts and everything that you got in your house. Okay, we're supposed to be living it out by doing his work man okay for it is the easy thing in the sight of the Lord on a sudden to make a poor man rich okay so yeah how about Shemel Shai at the snap of a finger can make a man rich at any given moment okay that's the power of how about Shemel Shai and that's a light thing to the Lord to do that man Okay. So again, man, you put your stock into this work and you are abound in this work. Guess what? The Lord's gonna take care of the rest, man. Alright? So there's no need to worry. And with that, I'm going to end off on that note. I think I also got a notification of uh everybody's new president now. Joe Biden. Since he won won the election. So Hey, we're about to see a dark winter, man. I'm going to go ahead and close out on that note. Lord's words edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel. Again, I'm going to give all praise on and glory to Yahweh. Ba'ashim Yahushai, Ba'ashim Rechakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the others of great millstone that rewards to this day. And also Shalom, peace and safety, salutations to the whole elect this labor and his work. Give me a diligence to make your calling and election sure. In faith, in truth, and sincerity, and all charity. With that, that's a shallow one.